By understanding the different quality traits of rice and how they are affected, you can prevent losses from occurring or continuing. White rice and milled rice have a set of distinguishing traits that can be measured to help determine white rice quality. In this video, we will show you what determines white rice and milled rice quality and teach you how to measure their physical quality traits. Milling-related characteristics are very important measures of value because these are the major concerns of the consumer and they affect the price of white rice. Rice is influenced by a combination of varietal and environmental properties. Environmental properties are affected by crop production, harvesting, processing, and handling. Some varietal properties include the color of the grain, its shape, size, chalkiness, and bulk density. Some important environmental properties determining white rice quality are moisture content, head rice recovery, grain dimensions, whiteness, There are particular characteristics of milled rice and white rice that are used to quantify white rice quality. The properties of milled rice that should be measured are moisture content, the milling degree, the milling recovery, the dockage, head rice, and broken grains. Let's explore each of these measurements in detail. Moisture content of milled rice is the weight of water remaining in the grain. Moisture content should not be higher than 14% to prevent molding. To use a moisture tester, first, read the operating instructions. Then check if the batteries are still good. Next, turn on the power and make sure that the machine is set for milled rice. Then fill the tray or bowl of the moisture tester with a milled rice sample. Turn or press the knob until the moisture reading is displayed. It may take a little force, but make sure you turn the knob all the way as described in your manual, or you will get a wrong reading. Test at least three samples of the grain for an accurate moisture content reading. The milling degree describes what percent of the grain weight is removed in the milling process or the amount of bran removed from the brown rice. You should aim for a milling degree of 10 to 12 percent. To obtain the weight of brown rice, dehull the putty samples using the laboratory huller. Then estimate the percent milling degree using the following equation. The weight of the milled rice is divided by the weight of the brown rice, and then multiplied by 100. Calculating the milling degree is not always possible, because it requires weighing the brown rice and the milled rice. If only a milled rice sample is available for a quick estimate of the milling degree, the rice milling chart can be used. Put a small sample on one of the four panels of the rice milling chart. Read the milling degree of the background panel, which matches the grain sample best. Milling recovery refers to what percentage of the grain weight remains after milling the paddy. Using the abrasive whitener, mill the dehulled samples, then compute the milling recovery by dividing the weight of the milled rice recovered by the weight of the paddy sample used and multiplying this sum by 100. Foreign matter in paddy reduces the milling recovery and the quality of rice. In milled rice, customers judge materials other than grain or dockage as one of the major reasons for discounting the price because you have less grain weight as basis. 
Dockage also gives grain an unclean appearance and may discourage customers from buying it. The weight of foreign matter can be calculated as a percentage of your milled rice by calculating the dockage. For the dockage, select, segregate, and weigh the foreign matter. Next, record the number of unhulled grains collected from the sample. Then determine the percentage of dockage of milled rice using the equation. The weight of dockage divided by the total weight of milled rice and then multiplied by 100. Head rice is a major factor that determines the price of milled rice in most markets. Depending on the national standard, head rice is usually defined as grain kernels that consist of at least 80% of the whole grain. Using the grain grader, separate the broken grain from the whole grains. Compute the percentage of the head rice recovery components using the following equations. For the percentage of head rice, divide the weight of whole grains by the weight of the paddy samples and multiply this by 100. For the percentage of brokens, divide the weight of the broken grains by the weight of the paddy samples and multiply this by 100. You can also divide the brokens into small brokens and large brokens. In many markets, other quality traits such as chalkiness, whiteness, and grain shape affect the price of white rice. Now let's learn how to measure each of these properties in detail. A visual rating of the chalky proportion of the grain based on the standard evaluation system scale is used to measure chalkiness. First select segregate and weigh the chalky grains to SES scale 9. Then determine the percentage of chalky grain using the following equation. The weight of chalky grains divided by the weight of milled rice and then multiplied by 100. Improper post-harvest operations usually lead to discoloration of grains. The whiteness of rice is therefore often an important indicator for good quality milled rice. To measure the whiteness of the rice, measure the grain whiteness using the whiteness meter. Separate and weigh the yellow fermented grains. Then calculate the percentage of yellow fermented grains using the formula. Weight of the yellow grains divided by the total weight of the milled rice multiplied by 100. Grain shape and dimensions are varietal properties and can therefore be used to identify a variety. For determining the rice grain shape, follow the procedure of determining grain shape of paddy. The average paddy length in millimeters divided by the average paddy width in millimeters. Based on the length to width ratio, the shape of the milled rice will be determined. The ISO classification is as follows. Those are the basics of determining and measuring white rice quality. Follow each of these steps carefully to ensure accurate measurements. Remember, better quality grain equals better market value.